Hey, it's Carolyn Brown here. I'm the co-founder of Career Care Package. If you're looking for a job, one of the most important things that you'll hear from people is to keep your confidence up. But it's really hard to do if you get a lot of knockbacks or you don't hear from people. So we interviewed Anita Van Ruin. Now, Anita is a confidence coach. She helps people from all walks of life maintain or build up their confidence. So in this interview, we played the mindset magic game. And the mindset magic game is about getting some fantastic tips from her about how to reduce your anxiety and boost your confidence. She talks about words that you should absolutely banish. She gives us her secret formula and a whole lot of other fantastic tips in between. So listen up. If you like what you see, please give us a thumbs up. If you like what you see and you want to see more of us, we are uploading videos pretty much every week with experts as fantastic as Anita. So please subscribe and make sure you listen to the end because she drops truth bomb after truth bomb and it's an absolutely fantastic interview. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Naishad Gadani coming to you from sunny Melbourne. And today is 172nd episode of Career Care Package. And on today's episode, we are talking about building confidence, how to bounce back if you are not feeling that great. So, and to help us, you know, unpack this and, you know, in a fun and interesting way, we have invited Anita Van Ruin and she considers she talks herself as a chief confidence hacker and that's an amazing title it actually grabs people's attention straight away so and obviously we have seen uh, we have found ourselves in a dreadful situation since last six seven and a half months and it was interesting to notice that two days back was the anniversary of the first covid case reported in china and this year has gone like a blip complete a blip and um, the impact of the first case and what has transpired out of it is is felt all across the world so to, to really to come out of that and bounce back from this negative you know things that we are facing we have invited Anita to talk us through and share some of the the magic cards that she has brought as well with her so we will come to the magic cards and everything but first let's welcome Caroline Brown Thanks, Mesh. And yes, I feel very welcome. And I'm absolutely excited to be speaking to you today, Anita, because, you know, sometimes with confidence, you kind of think you can take a, a magic pill. But the idea I like in your title is Chief Con Confidence Hacker. And I think sometimes you've just got to do some things to prove to yourself that you can do it or trick yourself sometimes, I think, in terms of um, gaining confidence. So welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. I am so excited to be here. Love it. I may be a bit singy songy the whole time that we're talking. So, you know, apologies in advance for your ears. No, I love it. We've never had a guest that sings before. So go for it. You still haven't because I'm not a singer, but I just I love to sing. sing while I'm talking. I love it. Um, so what is what do you do? I was watching on a YouTube channel some lovely testimonials from international graduates or students or arrivals here about the difference that you've made with the program. So maybe a good place to start is just to tell us about that work and then let's jump into the game. Sure, sure, sure. So Confidence Hackers is, uh, is the name of my business and we provide uh, proactive, preventative well-being for international students. So what that looks like is helping students with life skills, um, which then translates into, you know, those soft skills, employability skills that bosses are looking for always that a lot of students and a lot of young people, a lot of humans actually struggle with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, would, I think, you know, a lot of the stuff that Nesh and I talk about in the job search, you know, half of it could be cured, and, you know, I know my business as well, with an injection of I can do that versus I don't think I can do that. And the voice, the I don't think I can do that voice 
is fairly perceptible, but it's always there. Do you know what I mean? So I love the idea of the work that you do. Yeah, look, it's all come about because I used to be the shyest person in the universe. Okay. Um, yeah, and, like, I had zero confidence. I had a lot of self-doubt. That little voice that you spoke about, um, for me, wasn't a little voice. It was mm -hmm. like a roaring lion mm -hmm. just constantly telling me, no, you can't, no, you can't, no, you can't. Um, and you never will be able to when you're not good enough and all of those kinds of things. And as I built my confidence up step by step and using what I now kind of look back at it and go, it was like a cha-cha of personal development. So it was <laughs> like, you know, two steps forward, one step back, one step forwards, 10 steps back sometimes trying different things some of them worked some of them didn't and then you know really deciding to to actually understand what is going on behind it why like our human behavior mm -hmm. and humans are fascinating we're weird i love us because we do all kinds of weird stuff that we don't understand that we think is random and nothing is so as i went through that journey I kind of decided um, that then I wanted to explore that further. Went and learned and went and, and studied, retrained as uh, a human behaviour expert and uh, coach, mm. and that has opened up doors in all kinds of different areas for me as well. Mm. Fantastic. Yeah, that sounds really awesome. We'll just uh, welcome Balin saying that, uh, you know, hope everyone is enjoying Melbourne ease of restrictions. Absolutely. And our, also at the same time, our solidarity with the South Australians as well, because I think they have got pretty tough six days ahead. And I hope that that finishes in six days as well, because we want to go and watch India playing uh, Australia in the Adelaide Day and Night Test as well. So please get your act together, everyone, <laughs> nice and you know, make that possible. Thing. Just, I'm just putting a plug. That's that's you know, I, I know there are thousands of people there, but that's a selfish, um, you know, uh, thinking that I have. Arita, it's tell all, us about. It's last... all about the cricket, isn't it? Life is just Absolutely. all about the cricket. So remember, the first time we spoke, when you called me, I was. Yes. I was Helping my kids with their cricket training, it is. And especially okay. in the summertime, it takes over uh, me. I know once once India loses one game, I'll probably want to never talk about that again. You know? But I think that's the that's what happens. Now, tell us about, you know, in the last six months, I'm pretty sure that your skills would be put to huge test in the last six months because it is, uh, you know, especially if you're, you know, dealing with international students, I think they have... They've been dealt a huge blow to their career aspirations, to their living uh, aspirations as well. Tell us about this experience and what are your observations and how have you seen students really, you know, deal with these kind of challenges? Yeah, look, I think international students have, they've really had kind of the, the rough end of the stick here, you know, starting from you know, our beloved Prime Minister basically saying to international students, if you can't afford to stay here, um, go home. You know, welcome, welcome to Australia. We love having you here. We love taking your money. But if you can't afford to be here, get on a plane and go back home again. And that, I think, really, you know, really um, shook a lot of students. They're young people. You know, a lot of the students that are here are very, very young people, first time away from home. You know, arriving here, you know, some people that are young people I was talking to arrived here and, you know, weeks later, you know, landed in toilet paper gate, you know, couldn't get toilet paper, couldn't get this, couldn't get that. And, you know, really shook them like it did all of us to our core and to our foundation. Um, and I think for international students, it, it was even worse because they didn't have those networks of friends here, those connections here, um, didn't even know about like the resources and support available here. And so it has been a very, very big journey for a lot of international students. Um, I'm particularly uh, grateful to the likes of Study Melbourne who look after international students and they recognised very early that 
you know, students were really struggling with their confidence, dealing with resilience. How do we, you know, as you said, how do we continue to bounce back after sort of knock after knock after knock? And they um, got in contact with me and said, Anita, we think you're the right person. You're just probably crazy enough, sing-songy enough. <laughs> um, and the skills that you have are useful, yeah? Like it needs to be some stuff that students can take away skills with them straight away so that they can implement and build their confidence through this time when there's so much stuff that they can't do. So that has been a really um, a huge blessing, I think, for international students to have that support there. Um, and for the students that have attended, we did an eight week pilot program, um, which is now rolled into another eight week program, which is very exciting um, and a whole bunch of other things as well. And, you know, it it made me really realize that for all of us, it's the small things that make a difference. It's it's not trying to take a huge leap, trying to superman yourself, you know, leap over buildings in a single bound. It's those small incremental changes that you can make um, consistently that really, you know, when you then turn around and have a look how far you've come, that you can be really, really proud of yourself. And it's funny, I had a student um, just last week uh, who was saying, oh, Anita, like, you know, I, I don't feel like I've achieved anything. Like there's so much ahead of me. There's just so much and there's so much I haven't done yet. And I'm thinking to myself, like you're 19 years old. <laughs> You've got a whole life ahead of you as well. Um, and, you know, we had to have this conversation about, you know, when you're in a car, like the windscreen is this big. Let me show you in the screen. Oh, I got my hands the wrong way. Your windscreen is this big and your rear vision mirror is this big. So it's really important. Yes, we need to have a windscreen and a big space to be able to look at where we're heading in the future. But it's so important to have that rear vision mirror to, to actually stop for a moment and just look how far you've come because... You know, we have all of us that are here, we have a 100% success rate of getting through each day. And, you know, we can take something from each of those things and it's easy to forget to just look back at how far you've come. And so interesting that, you know, this this young man, um, that was actually two Mondays ago, this Monday came back into the group and he said, Anita, I took your advice. He said, I, I, I took a moment and I looked and I realised I've actually come a really long way through this journey, through COVID, leaving home, building up some skills, learning how to, you know, adult. It's a whole lot of us still don't know how to do that really <laughs> super well yet, but, you know, learning how to adult and, you know, and and having having that opportunity and taking that moment and just re realizing and remembering that it's so important, like not to be staring at the rear vision mirror, not to be staring behind you, because if you do that, you are most definitely, you know, think about if you're driving in the car, staring at the rear vision mirror, you are going to crash. But having that balance of, I need to be looking in the windscreen, looking in, in front of me and taking that moment to look behind me and see how far we've come and those sort of things just make me go oh, like that because it is those simple things that we forget so with those small steps are those small steps different for everybody that you know you're talking about i think that they're different at different stages in your life Mm -hmm. uh, like I've worked with everything from CEOs to world champion dancers to elite athletes to students to stay-at-home mums, you name it. And it's really funny because the challenges are oftentimes very, very similar mm -hmm. but sort of in a different wrapping. Mm -hmm. So the CEO, their confidence challenges may be around 
uh, you know, look, I'm not sure that I'm actually doing the right thing. I'm kind of, I feel like I'm a bit by myself here. I feel like I'm out on a limb. I'm not really sure. I've mm. got a board that I have to report to. I'm really worried about this meeting coming up to, you know, somebody who's, um, you know, like a, a, a cha world champion dancer who's about to go on stage and has those similar thoughts of I'm not sure that I'm good enough but it's wrapped in a different bubble. They've got to go out and do a performance for three minutes that mm. has to represent the entirety of their career. To students who are going, you know, walking into an exam or an interview going, oh, I'm not sure that I'm good enough. Um, why would they pick me? I'm just me. Mm. So the challenges I think in, in every stage are similar, but wrapped in different kind of wrappings with different bows on them and for different people there's they have different different number of layers that kind of cover up that so you know like a pass the parcel game where mm. it's got layers and layers and layers and layers of paper over the top of it you know for some people and I think for most of us we've got a number of different coping techniques that work to some degree or not mm. um, and you know working out how to just take one of those layers off at a time mm. to get to this amazing price that's in you know that's inside um so look there are different challenges but same same but different really it's very very interesting that you know the work that i as i said the work that i do with ceos is very similar to the work that i will do with students mm. Which is kind of hard. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so let's let's pick up some some games. Let's start, you know, looking at some of those things and how do you really, you know, you know, because I I think and correct me if I'm wrong because um, so they are nudges or trigger cards, aren't they? So they they trigger your thinking in a different direction. Is that what they? Yeah. So I made these this to? deck of cards. They're called mindset magic cards and they like it's they're 30 different cards and they are prescriptions to challenges that are everyday challenges that we all face so things like i mean how many times have we heard um this one let it go <laughs> let it go right <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> yeah i'm not gonna do that again <laughs> Good old frozen, right? How many times have we heard, oh, you should just let it go, let it go. Oh, and, that. you know, like it's supposed to be something easy, letting go. That's so funny. I was having a conversation with a friend of mine yesterday that was spurred from actually a post on Facebook in a group that I'm in. Um, and it was the, the post on Facebook was, what's the worst advice you've ever been given <laughs> to yeah the worst advice the worst advice you've ever been given to not to be shy mm. and somebody had put in you know like whenever anybody says oh just do it or just be confident or just this or just that and it's so true because like as i said when i was the shyest person in the universe my sister bless her i mean i love my sister she is probably one of the most confident charismatic people in the universe so we couldn't have been more different and she used to like just say oh look at it just go and talk to them like just you know you can't make friends just go and just go and talk to people and i'm like okay the word just mm -hmm. has to be gone out of the vocabulary in this kind of in this kind of context because it really undervalues the challenges that people are are really facing with you know oh just let it go or just go and do this just whatever and so you're so like all of these cards have got different oh, get my camera around the wrong way different messages on it and this one says like forget letting go mm -hmm. because how do we even know how to let go of things what I've discovered is that there is a whole better way that is actually easier. It feels more free. It feels more simple. 
which is why, you know, confidence hackers, we come up with hacks, simple, fast ways to tricky problems. And instead of being Elsa and letting it go, we need to put on our Beatles and we need to let it be, let it be. When we can just let stuff be, it means that we no longer have to have any kind of physical thing of like trying to drop something. We can just breathe. So like all of these cards, this is what it says here, you know, um, instead of letting it go, which feels like such an active burden, how about we just try letting things be? It doesn't mean that whatever was holding, um, whatever you were holding on to is right or acceptable. It just means you value yourself enough to just to not allow that thing to hold you back anymore. So these are these cute little reminders. Um, some places, some people have used them as, um, you know, gifts for friends, for workplaces, for all those kinds of things. Some places have used them rather than giving out a pack of like the 30 different cards, have over 30 weeks given out one card every week mm. to workplaces, to that kind of thing. So that you can just focus on one thing at a time. So how about, would you guys like to, um, I'm going to say, how? Do, I'm not sure how we do this as when we, how we pick a card over the internet, but Let's just pretend I'm going to flick them like mm -hmm. this and you can tell me when to stop. Okay. Stop. Stop. Oh, look at that. You both were synchronised too. <laughs> this one, oh, I was going to say it's, my, it's one of my favourites, but I think they're all my favourite. <laughs> this one is one of, it's a life formula and there's I think three or four life formulas in here. And I love life formulas because like hacks you know like in any kind of formula a scientific formula like e always equals mc squared i have no idea what e m c is but e always equals mc squared right life formulas are the same and this one oh this hand i keep getting it wrong this hand a life formula number three is all about what i call the happiness paradox which is all about, let me read it out to you, because the formula goes like this, have minus give equals more. Ooh. So if you have stuff and you do something to give it away, you actually get more. How does that even work? So in normal life, the more of something that we give away to others, the less of it we have for ourselves making us really careful about what and who we give things to. The happiness paradox turns that on its head. Whatever you have, the more of it you give away, the more you get in return. So the prescription is the best way to achieve happiness for yourself is to give happiness to others. So give in whatever way you can, meaning give a smile, give a hug, give a listening ear, give a crap, give a donation <laughs> in any way, give of yourself so you can see they're a bit cheeky like me because i say things like you know give a crap um including toilet paper surprisingly uh, <laughs> so all of these cards are focused on how do we make those small changes that we can do every day in our lives to increase our own happiness to increase our own self-worth to increase, I think, the well-being for society. So um, I was talking to some students the other day and we had um, a guest speaker that was talking about volunteering, which interestingly is exactly this formula. Um, I don't know, have you guys done any volunteering before? Yeah. Yeah? Yep. Let me ask you this question whatever volunteering you've done when you've finished the day the activity whatever it is have you felt exhausted or exhilarated a bit of both i think um you know there's a lot of like the volunteering i did was working with asylum seekers helping them find jobs but i ended up doing a whole lot more uh, and having these 
a raft of different experiences from going to court to writing letters to meeting lawyers, everything that I just would never have had. So I was exhausted by, I suppose, the effort, but it didn't feel like effort at the time. Um, but also the exhilaration, I think, was more reflecting on it and going, I'm so glad I did that. I, I learned so much. So, yeah, um, not necessarily at that time, but, you know, when I, I reflect back on it. So, so it's that I looking in the rear vision mirror. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And what about you, Nai? Yeah, I think they're similar. I can probably give you a recent, very recent example. Yesterday when I was, you know, as a team manager of my Fast 9 cricket team, and I, me and the coach were, you know, having, uh, you know, helping kids to do bowling and batting and all those practices. It was exhausting, you know, asking the nine, seven, eight year olds to do, you know, you know, to get them to do what we want them to do, right? And then some of them have not got their beds up and blah, blah, blah. So it was exhausting in that point of view. But once we are done, saw the kids were happy with practicing and everything else that, you know, brought smile on the face that, wow, you know, they could achieve this in just one hour. So it's, you know, it's a good, the, I think the act itself, you know, could be exhausting. You're tired just because of the act. But the experience that I'm left with is one of positive, uh, not that, oh, shit, why did I do this? Yeah, absolutely. It's so funny because I know when I've done volunteering and before I before I retrained as a human behaviour expert and coach, I worked for about 15 years in the not-for-profit space, um, mm -hmm. organising volunteers and volunteering myself and doing all kinds of things like that. And you're exactly right. Like you, whatever it is that you're doing, you put your heart and soul into. So it does become exhausting mentally, physically, emotionally, whatever. But you walk away going, oh, my God, like I've made such a difference. I've achieved some stuff. I've done something that has got purpose and value to it. I'm helping another human. Mm -hmm. And that's where the whole, you know, um, have minus give equals more because I think, you know, you end up personally enriched. And I know every time I've done volunteering, I kind of have this, um, my, my head and my heart sort of go to this space of, wow, that actually felt kind of selfish because I feel like I've got so much out of it, so much more out of it even though I've given and I've done a whole heap of stuff, but I still feel like I've got more out of it than what I've given. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you, you guys are there nodding your heads as well. And, you know, I think that's part of us being in a, in a community and being part of something that's bigger than us, which also builds confidence and builds all kinds of um, extra skills that we may not have ever known about. I know with the volunteering that I did as the former shyest person in the universe, <laughs> uh, like seriously, you can't possibly imagine because I sometimes can't even, that, you know, in that space of being a volunteer, it was almost like something it was almost like, you know, like there was a different layer over the top of me that I could have this extra confidence because I was doing something for other people and that gave me this extra amount of courage, this extra amount of confidence and strength that then I could somehow magically build into other areas of my life as well. Absolutely. Can I, because I, I looked at, uh, you know, your cards, uh, you know, on the website, and I think, you, you know, th there's a picture as well. There's something which called reframing thing. Can you bring that? Because I want to understand, uh, sure. you know, you know that because reframing is something that, you know, kind of as part of my study uh, in grad cert, we are kind of touched on that aspect. But if you know, can you elaborate on that? Can you can you say what? Sure, so how do you reframe it? That's so it. Yes, with, yeah. the, with the ice cream that's fallen on the ground. Oh, that makes me incredibly sad because I love ice cream, especially on a hot day like today. <laughs> but any day, really. So reframing is taking whatever is going on for you and changing how we see it. 
the way like humans are very very powerful in the way that we make meaning of different things so um i was talking to a client like at the start of lockdown and he was saying about you know isolation this isolation that and isolation is a very like it's a very heavy kind of word you know emotionally it's very heavy it's very lonely it's very you know isolating and so we we worked on what we could call uh isolation instead and out of nowhere he said what if we call it incubation mm. and i was like i think i love that mm. like i totally love it so that's re that's reframing something that feels very heavy like isolation reframing it into incubation now in incubation you think about you know you have an egg that's in an incubator maybe on the outside it doesn't look like anything is changing but on the inside there's growth there's development there is expansion there's all of these amazing kind of processes going on inside that are hidden that you know chip 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 and then out comes this whatever it is a, a bird dinosaur who knows who knows and that was like to me that was such an impactful way of reframing isolation that i've used it now in all kinds of different places with a whole lot of different audiences that it can really change the way that we look at our life uh, the circumstances that are going on as I said isolation feels very very heavy incubation knowing that in within that time and within that space you know we all have the opportunity to use our isolation time as incubation time and learn a new skill or connect with people that we hadn't connected with or start 172 um you know <laughs> podcasty video casty things like this is a process of incubation right like it's taking the circumstances that we're in and it's reframing it saying okay we're going through like i mean hands up who thinks that i uh, that covid sucks says every person ever <laughs> but it's taking that and saying okay covid sucks the situation that we're in sucks how can we look at things through a different lens how can we shift our focus because whatever whatever you focus on is what you're going to get if we are focusing on how shitful COVID is guess what we are going to find everywhere same with you know when we look at ourselves in the mirror if we are focusing on what an awful person we are how hopeless we are how useless we are how we can't we can't we can't how we've never got we can never do anything right but reframing that into perhaps i can use that to look at what i can do right maybe though the interviews that i went for that i didn't get what can i learn out of that using using what's happened twisting it around and actually making it something that is beneficial to us rather than something that's harmful and so reframing is is an incredibly powerful tool that we can all have in our tool belt it's literally just a matter of looking at things from a different perspective it's that whole thing of rather than just focusing this way through the windscreen sometimes we have to have a look in the rear vision mirror sometimes we have to twist things around sometimes we have to look at things upside down to be able to change the change the focus change the view what are your thoughts on um because i know like you know I, I suffer from anxiety at times and my anxiety is a replay of this scenario around and around and around in my head and it's only after you know that you're talking about letting go right it, those things pass after a time but if i try and let go 
it's like really, really difficult to do. So how do you, you know, and the reframing I really like, but sometimes I think you have to have that sort of circuit breaker or something that stops the the emotion of the time and feeling overwhelmed, say, for example, like being isolated. What's your technique or what's your advice around that kind of circuit breaker of, you know, from the stress in the cloud to the, I can actually reframe this, but believe that say, for example, the period of isolation is an incubation period. Like how do you, how do you make the switch last basically? It's such a great question because for a lot of people, a lot of the strategies that they have are kind of instant strategies and then five minutes later they don't work anymore. Mm. So the stuff that I that I like to focus on is those how do we make these changes that are that have to work now but are also lasting change as well. So mm. one of what what I found one of the most powerful things, and it's very simple because we do it all day, every day, is breathing. <laughs> I like breathing. I do it a lot. Mm. But I th- when when we get into that space of anxiety, our breath changes dramatically. Our breath gets very shallow. It gets very a uh, panicky. Yeah, panicky breath is a shallow breath. It's a quick breath. And so taking a moment and like I meditate now and can't believe that I meditate I always thought that it was kind of some weird thing that how can you possibly do that how do you think about nothing I can't like I still can't right but through breath what I've discovered is that meditation is not thinking about nothing Mm. it's being very focused about what you do think about and breathing I know when I'm in a stressful situation or going into a stressful situation, um, I will find a minute or more, sometimes it's 30 seconds, and breathe with intention, which is very different to just breathing because we breathe in and out naturally. Mm. We have to. Breathing with intention is, um, I use a, a, a breathing technique that I call sacred breathing. So it's breathing in through your nose. I point to it so I remember where my nose is. Um, and then breathing out through your mouth, but all the way down into your belly. Mm. So it slows down the breath. It gives your brain some time to calm. So while I'm doing that, I'm just focusing on breathing in is my belly going out? I put my hands on my belly to make sure that it is. Closing my eyes, breathing in through the nose. Just holding it for a second and then breathing out and relaxing your shoulders as you breathe out. Mm. And it sounds like it too simple to work. It sounds like it shouldn't and it does. Mm. And so breathing with intention has been something that has totally transformed my life because when you are the shyest person in the universe you are also the most prone to anxiety you are the most prone to embarrassment you are the most prone to feeling you know unworthy all of those kinds of things and i never knew that those feelings were anxiety i know that Mm -hmm. now as an adult um But that breathing technique was one of the first things I think that I learned that I did. And it just gives your brain some space to focus on something else Mm -hmm. rather than focus on because when you get into that space of anxiety, it sort of goes like this and then it goes like this down into a, a, a downward spiral yeah so taking some of those breathing techniques that's one thing I mean there's a whole lot of other stuff that I do with like my one-on-one clients dealing with you know especially if there is like a specific trigger moment they could be dealt with pretty much like that mm-hmm. um, you know I, I'm so fortunate I had um, a student in one of the um, workshops who 
we did an exercise and he messaged me later that night saying Anita I can't thank you enough like you've changed my life I had this time um, he said my father died several years ago and I've never got over the guilt because I was not at home when it happened and I've never been able to talk to anybody about it not my mum not anybody and anytime I think about him it just brings me to emotional wreck mm destroys my day I can't do anything and he said and that exercise that you took us through which was a group exercise um, and he said I can now think about my dad be grateful for him think about him in a loving way without having tears every time um, and it's changed my life and he said and and you know and that sort of stuff like I read that and just went <laughs> absolutely bawled my eyes out because it was so heartfelt and so genuine that you know this young man who had so much guilt and so much shame about not being there when his father passed away this one incident and it was impacting everything that he did mm -hmm. and that was in half an hour we changed it for him mm -hmm. so Carolyn there is hope for everybody including you <laughs> Thank you. Feel better. <laughs> Excellent. We just got comments from Balin says, Anita, depending upon the kind of work we do uh, for volunteering, body feels exhausted, but soul yeah. feels exhilarating. And Poonam says that meditation really helps a lot in stressful situations. So that's really great. Uh, you know, so as we are coming to the end, tell us about a few simple hacks that people can do now you know and specifically about the confidence because and we are talking you know purely from point of view of job seekers because i think you know when you send applications after applications and when you try to reach out to people there's no people ghost you people don't pick up your phone call and then you send out applications after applications and you hear nothing sometimes nothing and sometimes rejections so tell us about few hex that people can implement uh, around bouncing back from these rejections absolutely i have this belief that there is no such thing as failure there is only feedback so you know failure again is another word that's very very heavy when we look at the what we're getting back again that can help give us some indications like if you are putting out job application after job application after job application you're getting absolutely nothing back you're not getting interviews you're not getting anything what is it that is in your application what is it that is there that shouldn't be there or what is it what's not there that needs to be there now i know for a lot of people you know writing your resume yourself seems like a good idea and oftentimes it's really terrible because people underestimate themselves they undersell themselves chronically um i know i had an uncle years ago and and i helped him with his resume and he was working in australia post like you know with a procurement budget of millions of dollars and never put anything in like that into his into his you know cv and so i think you know the what we get back we we, we like we can use that as feedback to go okay so something's not working here what is it that needs to change is there something that i can do personally is there some extra training that i need to do is there something in my resume that needs to change is there something in my approach that i need to change am i sending out the same cv and same cover letter without modifying anything to like just blanket across to everybody that's never going to work. And I think, you know, like those kinds of things, when we start looking at, um, you know, what is it, what are those, like, what is the stuff that's going on? What is it telling us about ourselves? We are a reflection of everything that's going on. So have a look at what's going on, see what tweaks that you need to do. Yeah, it doesn't have to be wholesale massive change. Again, it's those small little things that we can do. We've got a uh, 
a comment from uh, Balin says that one very good uh, dialogue that I heard in a movie, uh, that it goes like this, that I haven't failed. I have only postponed my success. That's a really great uh, you know, point to complete our today's uh, LinkedIn Live with Anita when ruin. Anita, it's been fascinating catching up with you. And you, are, you, know, you ooze confidence. And nobody would believe that you were the shyest person in the universe. <laughs> I don't believe uh, it know, most times. Know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it is it is such you know you you know you've got contagious enthusiasm that yeah. I think that also transcends uh, even the boundaries of this. You know, I can feel the the enthusiasm on this part as well. So thank you again for bringing and you know spreading such a positive and such an important message at this point in time, Anita. Thank you again. That's such a pleasure, absolutely such a pleasure. And I think, you know, for, for anybody out there, job seekers, whoever, if you are not, you know, people say to me, oh, Nadia, you're so passionate. And I, I am. I love, love, love what I do. And I think if you bring that to everything that you do, you can't help but be successful. Mm. I love that. Thank you so much, Anita. Um, Tomorrow we've got Ask Us Anything, so please join in if you've got any questions about your job search at all. Nash and I will be standing by or uh, ready to answer them. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, please subscribe. We'd love to get more subscribers. Nash and I are sort of out to book of the world. And please follow the hashtag, hashtag, hashtag I don't know where that is, uh, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Excellent. Bye for now, everyone. Bye.